Hello my dear listeners and welcome to our today's class. It is our second lesson on the topic electrostatics 1. So let me commence by giving you the quote of the day which states that when you are confronted with a difficult moment, don't complain and ask why always me. Instead, have the courage and say try me. We will discuss that quote at the end of our class. So today we'll be looking at uh, methods of charging a conductor. But uh, now we have basically three methods of uh, charging a conductor. One is what we call charging by uh, induction. Two, we have uh, what we call uh, charging by uh, separation. And three, we have what we call charging by contact. Charging by contact. So uh, let's start by defining what we mean by the term earthing. Now, what is earthing? So earthing is the process of losing charges to or gaining charges from the earth through a conductor. Earthing is the process of uh, losing charges to or gaining charges from earth through a conductor. So that is what we call earthing. So whenever uh, charges are lost to the earth or they are gained from the earth, that process, we call it a thing. So let's start by discussing the first method of uh, charging a conductor, which is called uh, charging by induction. Charging by induction. So we have two ways. You can charge a conductor negatively or you can also charge it positively. So we'll start by uh, charging by induction using a glass rod. So from our previous lesson, we did say that uh, in electrostatics, uh, a glass rod is used to obtain uh, positive charges. A glass rod is used to obtain uh, positive charges. So it means that when, whenever you hear of a glass rod, just know that, that that rod is positively charged. Just know that the rod is actually positively charged. So in this experiment, the apparatus we require is, one, we need a polystyrene ball coated with aluminium. These are our balls here, which are coated with uh, aluminium. You also need a uh, uh, silk thread. This is what we are calling our silk thread, which is actually holding our spheres here, our spherical balls here, in uh, vertically. That is, it, it, it is used to suspend them. Then we may also need a glass rod. So this is our glass rod here. Also here, this is also, yeah, this is our glass rod. So we say that a glass rod is always uh, positively charged. Then you also need a silk cloth. Huh? So a silk cloth will be actually used to obtain the, uh, that is to generate the charges, to generate the positive charges. Then uh, lastly, second last, we also need a stand uh, that is to hold up our sphere here in a vertical position. Uh, to avoid it from touching the ground because it might lose or gain uh, charges from the earth. Then lastly, we need a polythene rod, a polythene rod. So the procedure involved uh, in uh, charging by induction is one, you suspend. Uh, to suspend is just to tie the ball such that it is hanging in air. You suspend the poly polystyrene ball coated with aluminium using the silk thread. So you, we suspend it in this manner. So it is tied somewhere there such that it is hanging in air. Whenever it is hanging in air this way, that is what we are calling to suspend. Then after that, you bring a charged glass rod close to but not touching the suspended ball. So after you've tied it, you bring a glass rod. This is our charged glass rod. Remember we described uh, methods of uh, obtaining a charged glass rod in our previous uh, class. So in case you don't know how this is coming about just revisit our previous class that is lesson one on electrostatics one so you bring this is my glass rod you bring a child glass rod to uh close to so it is brought close to that sphere but not touching the suspended ball so the glass rod is brought is brought close to the uh, sphere but it should not touch uh, the suspended ball then touch the side of the ball away from the glass with a finger that is now our next procedure so after you've suspended the ball uh, in air this way you bring 
are charged uh, glass rod close to but not touching the sphere then still at the same same position you touch uh, one end of the sphere with your finger we'll see why but the purpose is simply to for a thing so touch the side of the ball away from the glass rod with a finger of course as shown in a B here so you touch this side uh, with a finger so that will cause what we call a thing then while you are still uh, while holding the glass rod near the ball uh, while you are still holding this glass rod near the ball uh, withdraw the finger and then the glass rod so after this you remove your finger after removing your finger then you remove the glass rod then after that you bring uh, a charged uh, polythene rod remember a polythene rod we said it is usually negatively charged so you bring uh, a charged polythene rod uh, uh, you bring a charged polythene rod which is negatively charged close to but not touching uh, uh, the polythene polythene ball so you bring you bring a charged polythene rod which is uh, negatively charged close to the ball but not touching then of course you observe what happens now we need to see what is expected so the observation expected is that when a charged polythene rod is moved close to the charged ball they repel so if you take a polythene rod then you bring it close to this sphere it is observed they are observed to repel but the question is why why do they repel so initially remember that the sphere was neutral neutral means that uh, the positive charges and the negative charges were equally distributed and uh, mixed up in such a way that they cancel each other as we saw in our previous class so uh, initially the positive uh, glass rod attracts negative charges on the ball at the side close to it that is when the uh, this particular glass rod or the positively charged rod is brought close to the sphere but not touching remember that is what we mean by induction huh? it you bring the glass rod close to the sphere but it should not touch when it touches now that one becomes charging by contact so students should know that the difference between charging by contact and induction is that in contact actually uh, the, the the glass rod uh, or we, whichever rod is used has to touch the sphere but for the induction you just bring uh, the charged rod close to the sphere but it should not touch the sphere so we are saying that initially uh, the positive glass rod attracts the negative charges on the ball uh, at the side close to it leaving positive charges to the farthest uh, right side of the ball so when you bring a, a glass rod close to the sphere but not touching because the glass rod is positively charged it attracts the electrons or the negative charges uh, close to it remember the sphere initially had the positive and the negative charges but they had uh, uniformly distributed such that you can find maybe one positive here another negative here positive negative positive negative but immediately you bring a charged uh, glass rod close to the sphere but not touching because the glass rod is positively charged it attracts uh, the electrons or the negative charges that's why you are seeing the negative charges are closer they are closer to the charged uh, glass rod then after that again at the same time it is observed that the positive charges are repelled further remember from the uh, law of uh, electrostatic charges it simply said that uh, like charges will repel while unlike charges will always attract each other so because the rod is positively charged it means it will repel all the positive charges uh, to come to the right hand or to the farthest end so the charges are uh, arranged in, su in such a manner because the negative charges they are attracted to the positively charged rod whereas the positive charges are repelled uh, by the positively charged rod that's why they appear to the farthest end then after that we now come here to the our b here you touch the ball with the finger uh, that is we said you touch the ball uh, on the other side uh, that is uh, this side of the rod so touching the ball with the finger makes the negative charges flow uh, from the earth through the body to the sphere now remember a human being is connected to the earth uh, so that means whenever you touch uh, the sphere on one side using your finger because in this case we have three uh, protons or positive charges actually the earth will supply you with three electrons 
Now when the three electrons come here, that is on this side, they neutralize. Huh? They neutralize the three uh, protons that are on this side. Remember, the uh, elect protons are positively charged while electrons are negatively charged. Also, we said that the nucleus is neutral because the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. So if we have three protons here or positive charges here, then the earth is supplying us with three uh, protons. No, the earth is supplying us with three electrons. Remember, electrons are negatively charged. Those three electrons, they neutralize uh, the three positive charges that were here. Now, whenever a, a material is neutral, it means the net charge on it is actually zero. So, touching the ball with the finger uh, makes the negative charges. Remember, we said that earthing involves either losing of electrons or supply of electrons from the earth through a conductor. Now, remember the finger or the human being can also is a conductor in this case. So, touching the ball with the finger uh, makes the uh, negative charges of the electrons from from flow from the earth surface uh, through the body to the sphere. The electrons, that is the three electrons supplied by the earth uh, surface, they neutralize uh, the three positive uh, charges on the right part of the ball. So we had three positive charges here. The earth supplies uh, through the hand of the person who has touched the sphere on the right hand side. So the three electrons supplied by the earth they neutralize the three positive charges on this side. That is these three positive charges. So they neutralize them. Therefore, it, may, it, it, it will mean that this region will actually remain with no charges. Then, when the rod is withdrawn, remember, after touching, uh, we withdraw the... Uh, when the rod is withdrawn, the negative charges on the ball repel each other. Remember, in the procedure, we said that... Uh, uh, while you are holding the glass rod near the ball, you withdraw the finger and then and then the glass rod. So in this procedure, you remove the finger first. You withdraw the, fi the finger first. Remember, the, the purpose of the finger was just to connect us to the earth so that uh, the earth can supply us with three negative charges that will neutralize uh, these three positive charges here. So you remove the finger before... Then after removing the finger, then you remove the uh, glass rod. So when the finger is removed, remember after the finger is removed, it means all the three positive charges that were here, they were neutralized. So the sphere actually remains with only the, neg the three negative charges. Now, the negative charges are held in this particular side because they are being attracted by the glass rod. So you remove the finger, that is the earthing connection. Then after that, then you remove the rod. Now, when the rod is removed, it means that there is now no force to attract these electrons on this side. So, because these are negative charge, these are negative charge, these also are negative charge, and these are like charges, as we saw in the uh, basic law of electrostatic uh, charges, that like charges will always repel. So, the electrons, that is after the rod has been removed, the electrons or the negative charges in the sphere, they repel each other. So, repulsion means is what causes the charges to redistribute is what causes the charges to redistribute uniformly so when the rod is withdrawn the negative charges on the ball repel each other and spread uh, all over the ball hence the ball becomes negatively charged hence the ball becomes negatively charged now how do we confirm uh, that actually the ball is negatively charged so this can be confirmed by so we are saying that the ball becomes negatively charged as confirmed uh, by the repulsion from the negatively charged polythene rod. So when a, a charged, a negatively charged polythene rod is placed closer to this uh, sphere, it is they are observed to repel each other, showing that if the polythene rod was negatively charged, then it means uh, the sphere was also negatively charged, so that we have negative and negative charges actually repelling each other. So it is also noteworthy or important to know that Whenever a body is charged by induction method, it acquires charges that are opposite to the inducing charge. When a body is charged by induction method, it acquires uh, charges that are opposite to the inducing charge. What do we mean by this? In this case, we are using a positively charged glass rod. Huh? Then we are charging our sphere here or our conductor here. Then the final sphere that we are obtaining is negatively 
charged. So because we are using a positively charged, then this induction method, that is uh, where a conductor is brought closer, uh, uh, that is the charged glass rod is brought closer to the conductor but uh, not touching. Because this is positively charged, we will obtain a sphere that is negatively charged. So whenever a conductor is charged by induction method, it acquires charges that are opposite uh, to the inducing uh, material or the inducing charge. So this is positive the final conductor will be negative. So positive and negative, those are what? Opposite charges. A similar experiment can be carried out, but now this case using a polythene rod. Remember we said that a polythene rod is used in electrostatics to obtain negative charges. So here we have our negatively charged rod. We have the same same sphere as in uh, this first case here. The only thing that is changing is that here we are using a polythene rod instead of a glass rod. So whenever a polythene rod, uh, so the procedure is exactly the same. You take the polythene rod, you place it closer to the conductor, but not touching. That is our spherical conductor here. You bring it close to the conductor, but not touching. Now, whenever the polythene rod is brought, is brought close to the conductor, but not touching, it means the positive charges within the conductor. Now, remember the sphere initially, it was neutral. Neutral means the positive and the negative charges were distributed uniformly. That is, they were not further as shown here. Maybe we had one positive here, another negative, positive, negative. That way, when it is a neutral. But whenever a polythene rod is brought close to the uh, our sphere here, but not touching, the positive charges will always be attracted uh, to the negatively charged rod. Because remember, uh, that is courtesy of the uh, the basic law of electrostatic charges that are uh, unlike charges will always attract each other so positive charges are attracted uh, to the negatively charged polythene rod whereas negative charges are repelled uh. so because this negatively charged it will repel all the negative charges that's why the negative charges appear on the further end whereas positive charges appear closer because these are unlike charge whereas negative and negative those are like charges then after that, uh, with the uh, polythene rod in position, you touch the right hand side, that is this side of the sphere, with your finger. Now we, we said that the purpose of touching it is actually earthing. Huh? So earthing involves flow of electrons, uh, losing of electrons to the earth or gaining of electrons from the earth through a conductor. So in this case, the human being or the hand is the conductor. So it means that when you touch, huh, so the right hand of the sphere is touched uh, with the finger whereby it is observed that uh, the electrons uh, so remember this side we have three negative charges or we have the three electrons uh, we have the three electrons therefore the earth in this case will supply the electrons to the earth so remember that is earthing earthing involves either gaining electrons from the earth or losing from the earth in the first case the earth supplied us with the, supplied us with the three electrons which neutralize the protons but here we have three electrons so the electrons will be supplied or will be lost to the earth's surface remember when we talk of uh, charges the flow of charges there are electrons which actually flow remember the protons uh, do not take part in reactions because they are within the nucleus but they are the electrons which are uh, in the outermost energy level therefore they can easily be lost or gained so in this case the earth uh, the three electrons uh, the three electrons are lost to the surface of the earth so when they are lost it means this region remains uh, with no charges or we simply say it becomes what positively charged so because the three electrons have, has been lost to the surface of the earth it means now the sphere only remains with uh, the three positive charges then after that of course as uh, as as it was in the procedure here you remove the finger then the uh, polythene rod so when the finger is removed and the polythene rod is also removed this will be the appearance of the charges uh, within this conductor so why do the charges redistribute they redistribute because of repulsion because these are positive charge these are positive charge so those are like charges and from the basic law of uh, uh, electro of the electrostatic charges is that like charges will always repel so these charges actually repel each other so you can be asked to give a reason uh, 
for the appearance of the charges so it is because of the repulsion it is because of the repulsion then uh, look at uh, uh, our second method here that is charging by contact charging by contact now when we say two things are in contact it means they actually they are touching each other they are touching each other so in this method uh, we'll start when we are using a glass rod we'll start with the procedure when we are using a glass rod as always as we said a glass rod is always positively charged as you can see the method is contact huh? you can see our sphere is in contact with the uh, glass rod they are in contact that is they are touching each other so the apparatus required here are one we need a polystyrene ball coated with a uh, aluminium paint this is our ball or sometimes we can just call it a spherical ball then we, we also need a silk thread this is our silk thread up there we also need a glass rod that is to test uh, the nature of the nature of the uh, conductor then we have a uh, silk cloth then we also need a polystyrene rod then a woolen cloth that is a woolen cloth will be used to obtain the negative uh, uh, that is the glass rod uh, which is a uh, positively charged so the procedure followed uh, in this particular method that is the method of conduct is that one you suspend the pl the polystyrene uh, ball coated with aluminium with a dry silk thread to suspend is just to tie it uh, such that it is hanging in air remember we don't want it to be connected to earth uh, because uh, we could lose or gain electrons from the earth so you just suspend it in a uh, free air then two you bring a charged glass rod close to but not touching the ball so initially you bring the glass rod close to but not uh, you bring the glass uh, rod close to but not touching the ball that is as a uh, that is our in our first procedure you bring it close to but not touching the ball sorry here in our first step this should not be touching the ball the ball the ball should be touched in the second part of the procedure so it is just a, a, a mistake here Th this ball should not be touching in the first procedure the ball should uh, touch the conductor in the second procedure so then after that you bring the charged uh, rod in contact with the ball that is uh, rolling it over the surface so in our first uh, case sorry this should not be touching it should be slightly far so in our second case you now touch uh, the glass rod uh, with the ball uh, you you take the charge the positively charged glass rod you now place it in contact uh, with the ball so you bring the charged glass rod in contact with the ball then roll it that is roll the glass rod over the surface then you roll it over the surface of this sphere then after that you withdraw uh, you withdraw the rod after rolling you withdraw the rod uh, then bring a charged polythene rod uh, remember polythene rod is uh, negatively charged uh, but not touching the sphere and observe what happens so the observation expected here is that the suspended ball is attracted by the polythene rod why because the polythene rod is uh, negatively charged but the sphere is positively charged so unlike charges will always attract each other however if the ball is, te is tested with a positively charged glass rod they repel why because uh, like charges will always repel each other now this is uh, the explanation why uh, they appear the way they are now when the positive uh, rod is rolled on the ball that is uh, in this procedure in this part b uh, when the uh -huh. when the positive rod that is our glass rod is rolled uh, on the ball some of the negative charges induced induced in the ball are neutralized uh, by some positive charges on the rod so when you take the positive charged rod in contact with the sphere remember we have we had three electrons here or negative charges here so the three negative charges remember here we have uh, three positive charges of the rod so they, these three positive charges they neutralize uh, the three electrons that are here that is when they get in contact so the three electrons here they are neutralized uh, by the three protons that's why this gap has no the electrons so these three has been used to neutralize uh, the three electrons that were actually here now when they are neutralized it means now the charge at this side is zero so this sphere only remains being 
positively charged. So we are saying that when the positive rod is rolled on the ball, some of the negative charges induced in the ball are neutralized by some positive charges on the rod. Now when the rod is withdrawn, the positive charges do what? Redistribute. The positive charges redistribute themselves all over the surface of the sphere. What causes the redistribution is the repulsion. It's because of the repulsion. Then, it is important for students to know that whenever a body is charged by contact method, it acquires charges that are similar to the ones on the charging rod. So this is what we mean. Huh? Our charging rod was positively charged. Then our final sphere is also positively charged. So whenever a material or a conductor is charged by contact method, it acquires uh, charges which are similar to the charging material, to the, char to the charges of the charging material. So a similar experiment can be carried out, but now using a poly thin rod. Remember, a poly thin rod is negatively charged. Uh. This is our poly thin rod, which is negatively charged. So uh, in the part of the procedure, remember this was a, a mistake. In A, the sphere should not be in contact with the negatively charged rod. So you just bring the negatively charged rod or the polythene rod close to the sphere but not touching. Then in our, so it is observed that because the rod is uh, negatively charged, it means the positive charges will now be attracted uh, to the side closer to the sphere, closer to the negatively charged polythene rod. Then the negative charges will be on the further end because they are being repelled uh, by the uh, negatively charged polythene rod. In the second procedure, you now bring uh, the polythene rod close to the uh, sphere. You bring them in contact. In the, in the second procedure, they should now be in contact. That is, they should touch each other. So that, remember here we had uh, three positive charges. Huh? So the three positive charges, they are neutralized huh, by the three electrons. These are the three electrons here. That's why you are seeing there are no electrons here. So the three positive charges are neutralized uh, by the three negative charges of the uh, conductor or of the polythene rod. So it means this region remain with no charges. Then after that, of course, you break the contact or you remove uh, the polythene rod. So the charges will redistribute as shown in here. So when the charges redistribute, it means that they distribute because of the repulsion. They redistribute because of the repulsion. So to test the presence of the charges on this conductor, you can either use a glass rod or uh, a polythene rod. Now when a polythene rod or a negatively charged conductor is brought close to the a sphere but not touching, it is observed that they repel each other, proving that the sphere has been negatively charged. However, when you bring a glass rod or a positively charged rod close to the conductor but to the sphere but not touching, they are observed to attract each other, meaning they are unlike charges. They are unlike charges. So, uh, as you can see here, we said that in contact method, the sphere, the final sphere acquires charges that are similar to the charging material. So, this was positively charged material. The final sphere is positively charged. When we use a polythene rod or a negatively charged rod, the final sphere is also negatively charged. So you can be asked to give one major difference between charging a conductor by uh, induction and by contact. The difference is that in induction method, the final sphere acquires a charge that is opposite uh, to that of the charging rod. However, in uh, uh, contact method, in contact method, uh, when a body is charged by contact method, it acquires charges that are similar to the ones of the charging rod so that is the main difference between those two uh, lastly we look at uh, charging uh, a sphere by separation method so of course as always we start with uh, a glass rod a glass rod is always a uh, uh, positively charged positively charged so as the word suggests separation method it means we start with the spheres in contact then we separate them at the end so the procedure or the apparatus required in this experiment one you need uh, two metal spheres a and b so we have my sphere here a and b uh, of course which are uh, similar in size but we will uh, we'll see how they work so the procedure the apparatus required are two metal spheres a and b with an insulating stand why should they have an insulating stand so that uh, 
we avoid uh, gaining or losing uh, uh, electrons from the earth or to avoid earthing. So we use insulating stands. Remember an insulator does not allow flow of charges. So we also need a polythene rod, a woolen cloth, a stand and a thread. So the procedure involved here one is that place the two spheres A and B together so that they form a single conductor. So you place the two spheres together as shown here so that they form a conductor. Then two, charge a polythene rod and place it close to but not touching sphere A. So we charge a, 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 a glass rod. We charge a glass rod. So we, we, we've begun with the procedure involving a glass rod. So you charge a glass rod that is positively. Then you bring it close to but not touching. You bring it close to but not touching. Then, so you charge a, polythe, a, a, a glass rod and place it close to but not touching sphere A. Then move sphere B away so that it breaks the contact while holding the glass rod in position. So while the glass rod is in position, you move the sphere B further. So you just separate them. Huh? Remember the method is separation. You just separate them a little. Lead, a, 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 a little. Then withdraw the glass rod. Test the two spheres A and B using a suspended uh, positively charged polythene rod for the presence of the type of charges in the sphere. So after separating them, that is uh, then you remember the first procedure was you just uh, bring sphere A and B together such that they are one conductor. So one conductor means they are neutral. So when, when they are brought closer to each other, it is observed that sphere A, uh, the negative charges move closer to sphere to sphere A. Why? Because they are being attracted by the positively charged uh, glass rod. Then sphere B becomes positively charged because the positive charges are being repelled uh, by the positively charged uh, glass rod. Then when you remove the uh, sphere, sphere A remains with, positive char with negative charges while sphere B remains with positive charges. Then when the rod is completely removed, sphere the negative charges in sphere A they redistribute. Why? Because of repulsion. So they repel each other, then they redistribute in this manner. Then sphere B also, uh, when the glass rod is removed, uh, they also the charges also redistribute because of repulsion. So when they redistribute, it appears this manner. So when you bring uh, a glass rod uh, close to sphere A and close to sphere B, it is observed that. The glass rod is attracted to sphere A, however, it is repelled by sphere B, showing that sphere B is positively charged while sphere A is negatively charged. Why? Because attraction can only occur between uh, unlike charges, whereas repulsion occurs between uh, like charges, between like charges. So a similar experiment can be carried out, but now using a polythene rod, using a polythene rod. So the procedure is exactly the same. You just place two sphere A and B close to uh, together so that they form a single conductor. That is uh, as shown in this manner. Then move a polythene rod and place it close to but not touching sphere A. Then move sphere B away so that to break the contact uh, while holding the charged polythene rod in position. Then you withdraw the polythene rod. Test the two spheres A and B using a suspended a negatively charged polythene rod for the presence of the type of charges in each sphere. So when the procedure is carried out in such a manner, you just bring uh, the polythene rod close to but not touching. So the positive charges, uh, sphere A attracts the negative rod. So it is observed that when the two spheres are brought close to, uh, to the suspended charged polythene rod in turns, sphere A attracts uh, the rod while sphere B repels the rod. Now, when uh, the explanation is that uh, sphere A attracts the negative rod because it has acquired positive charges. Why? Because the positive charges are attracted uh, closer to the polythene rod. So the positive charges are attracted there while the negative charges are repelled. So we are saying that sphere A attracts the negative rod because it has acquired positive charges while sphere B uh, while are charges which are opposite to the charges on the rod. So remember opposite charges will always attract. 
However, as fear B now uh, repels uh, the road because it has acquired negative charges which are similar to the charges on the road. So we are, what we are saying here is that when the polythene rod is brought close to the two spheres, uh, positive charges become to sphere A because it, they are attracted by the polythene rod. Negative charges, they are repelled. So they remain in sphere B. Then when they are separated and the polythene rod is removed, sphere A remains with a positively charged while sphere B remains negatively charged. So when the rod, the polythene rod is removed, they, because the charges are similar, they repel each other, thereby redistributing. So this will be the appearance. Then sphere B, the same case, when the polythene rod is removed, they also redistribute because of the repulsion. Because of the repulsion. So when, when you bring a positively charged rod close to sphere A and B, sphere A repels it, whereas sphere B attracts it. Why? Because sphere A will always repel a positively charged rod because they have similar charges, whereas sphere B will always attract uh, a positively charged glass rod because the charges are opposite. Because the charges are opposite. Now we've come to the end of our class today, but we cannot end our class without discussing the quote of the day, which states that when you are confronted with a difficult moment, don't complain and ask why always me. Instead, have courage and say, try me. So the quote simply means that when things get tougher in life, don't quit. Instead, get tougher. Yeah, they always say that uh, when situations get tough, only the tougher ones uh, keep going. And remember that winners never quit, but quitters uh, never win. So if you want to win, don't quit. Don't quit. And lastly, train your mind not to see difficulties in every opportunity, rather to see opportunities in every difficult moment. This is Kind Tuition Academy. Kindly hit that subscription button on YouTube. Thank you.